Hi, welcome to another episode of Minimal Casts. This episode, I'm going to be jumping into the looking at Michael Cohen's library. Very nice library, it looks like. Uh, the Node QuickBooks library. Uh, I'm going to be expanding into uh, doing implementations with Node.js, hopefully. Uh, uh, this is a great tech stack. I think it's ready for, for prime time. I mean, even 2015, it, Node is very popular. But I think with the recent announcement to merge IO, IOJS into Node, IOJS has sort of a much better story for uh, implementing ES6 features in a staged way. And, um, it, you know, when you look at the NPM ecosystem and the community around Node.js, um, it should be very competitive with Ruby and Python. Uh, in the next few years, maybe it probably is already. So I'm excited about uh, doing integrations with Node and, and hopefully this will get you started quickly too. So without further ado, let me jump right in. Okay, now I actually just had a pull request into this into the, to the library added two days ago. So I, I had already done a screencast and uh, this is gonna help uh, make this uh, instead of a two-part session just a one and uh, let me go to the code now and I have <clears throat> and I recommend you use a fork yourself like if you're going to actually do an integration and are not just goofing around uh, you got to do one for your company or whatever uh, make a fork because what tends to happen is uh, you're going to find things and discover things or and fix things and that pull request might not get merged right away. So you may, you may want to run your uh, um, against your fork and then get that and, and then um, you know, get that pull request put in or maybe it won't get put in but I, I recommend using um, your own fork and that's what I did here but I also want to do uh, um, Um, okay, I'm just looking at this. Okay, so I'm in. All right. Okay, so you see some of these. Uh, I already did a screencast, like I said, and I have some of these. Uh, um, I'm going to switch over to here. I just want to see if I'm up to date. Okay, I'm not. So uh, let me, I'm just going to add uh, as uh, the main repository as, a, as an upstream um, repo. All right, let me pull in those changes, that pull request. Pull upstream master. Okay, so we got the latest. Now, what that pull request was about was to uh, get um, the example up to uh, express the, the latest express, which is 4.0. All right, let me also do a new branch. Okay, I'm also going to go into Tmux. Let's do a new window. Okay, now if we look at the the library, the that's <coughs> we're mostly going to be in this example directory. Uh, most everything is in this index.js file. It's a huge file. It has the entire library. And let's get started first by just spinning up an example. And I'm going to go over here. So in the root directory, you are going to need to do an npm install. Then you need to run one also in the example directory. Okay. So when we Spit up the node app.js, we're going to get express server listening on port 3000. Okay, and when we go to localhost 3000 start, okay, there we go. We just have a simple connect to QuickBooks button, very simple page. Okay, next we're going to, uh, I'm going to close <coughs> down. Uh, the, the simple node 
app.js and instead I'm going to use a package called node mon what NodeMon does is it automatically recognizes changes and will restart Express. So as we make changes, and I'm not going to have to um, stop and close uh, Node App.js all the time. So next, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, I'm going to go example directory App.js. That's what we're running right now. Close this down, and we need to put in a consumer key, consumer secret to do the OAuth. Um, uh, three-legged uh, OAuth and to do that you're going to need to, if you're brand spanking new to this you're going to need to do a um, go to developer.intuit.com sign up very quick sign up uh, you're going to want to make a new app um, let me go to my apps here I already have two existing apps but you're going to make a make a new app give it a name, follow the, the basic information there. Um, in your development tab here under keys is where your consumer key and consumer secret is. So um, just down a little bit in about line 28 there, you're going to um, put in the consumer key and consumer secret. Now best practices are to use an environmental variable from your, um, in my case, it's bash. It looks just like this here. This is where you could change your port. So I'm going to use the same, some kind of best practices here. Mine is called, my variable is called minimal cast consumer key. And secret. Okay, now when we have this properly set, as you can see, node mon is going to restart every time we make a change. Now we can uh, run through a very quick example. Now then I'm going to just uh, do, we're just going to do a little more, more of an advanced, uh, we're going to make a new route and uh, and uh, and that, but uh, let, let's go ahead and see because Michael Cohen has an example built right in here. Uh, as you see, it it follows OAuth procedures. We're going to go get do a callback. So it first runs through. Um, let, let's in fact open up the an example views the into EGS. As you can see in the start. We're rendering into it .ejs. Um, there is a little setup script that uh, is running this connect button that we see over here. Is really just um, this code and it's this proprietary stuff from Intuit. And uh, we're first running in this grant URL, the request token route, which is right here. Okay. Then it's going to do a callback and then it's going to run through a quick find of the chart of accounts and display them the console log, which will be over here in our uh, NodeMon um, console view. And I should add, it, it's also going to uh, close that because um, uh, it's a, usually a pop-up in this screencast. It's just going to be a new tab because I'm running in full screen mode, but it'll close that screen after it does authentication and runs through the chart of accounts. So let's go ahead and run through the authentication. I'm already signed in, so uh, I'm not going to have a sign-in step here. Um, okay. So we get an error, and this is minimal cast is not allowed to do payments uh, with Intuit. Okay, so what that means is we have to turn off the payments API because my uh, now when you set up your app, you may turn on payments. I didn't turn on payments for uh, the minimal cast API. All right, let's go back now. I'm going to have to refresh the page. 
uh, because it needs to change that JavaScript. And let's run through this again. Okay, so that did work. Uh, and now, you're, if you don't aren't already signed in, you're going to get a, um, a page to sign in. I don't have that because I'm already signed in over here to uh, Intuit, Intuit Developer. So let's authorize. Again, it's going to close this tab, so we're right back here to this page. But what we want to see is we want to go into the console, and here we see, yeah, we have the... I'm just going into Tmux um, um, escape mode here so we can see the, the view. But here's it's just basically the chart of accounts. Now, where is this chart of accounts coming from? The chart of accounts is coming from the sandbox. And what you get when you sign up with Intuit is you get a sandbox. So let me uh, open sandbox and a new tab. And uh, you get this nice sandbox. Um, okay, it's all right, it's just telling me. Let me go to the sandbox. Anyway, this is just a, um, exactly what it says it is, and we're pulling the chart of accounts that we see from here, just so you know that. Okay, that's going to be part one. That was just a basic run through. Now, in part two, I'm going to go a little deeper. Uh, get you a little more going um, in how you're going to start integrating this in an actual real project. So uh, stay tuned for that episode. Thanks for watching this one.